There are quite a few Battle Pass vehicles available in World of Tanks. In fact, there are 11 in total, ranging from the Cobra to the K91PT, AE Phase 1. There's a lot of different ones. And obviously, this gives you a lot of choices on what tanks you want to get your hands on. Now, usually, the newer, or should I say more dangerous Battle Pass tanks like the Cobra are a bit more expensive than others. In today's video, I will be sharing my personal opinion on the two best Battle Pass tanks that you should definitely get your hands on. And those two picks are the Char Future 4 and the AE Phase 1. I'm not only going to talk a little bit about the tanks, but we're obviously going to get into some gameplay as well. We're going to start off with the AE Phase 1. Not only is this one of the cheaper Battle Pass tanks in terms of tokens used, but it's also a really solid heavy in most situations. It features a very solid turret that, for the most part, isn't going to be cut through. And when you pair that with the fact that this has 400 alpha, a gun with 340 millimeters of heat pen, solid DPM, it's a dangerous tank in regards to the gun. There's really no downside on accuracy or aiming time. It's just a dangerous gun in general. It's got a lot of hit points at over 2,000, and it's quite mobile. With my turbo, I'm going at a top speed of 40 and a reverse of 17. So you kind of got it all. You got gun depression sitting at 10 degrees. You've got really, really good mobility, solid armor, and obviously a dangerous gun that even tier 10s are going to hate going up against. And when you combine all that together, the AE Phase 1 is easily one of the best Tier 9s, in my opinion, when it comes to heavies. I mean, sure, it has downsides, but so does every Tier 9. And I don't really think the downsides are too big on this vehicle. What are the downsides? Well, you obviously have the fact that it's quite a large lower plate, and it's not very well angled, so you're probably going to pen that quite easily. But I don't really think that's much of an issue. So we're going to make our way into... Well, kind of a hull down spot in mid. We'll see how that ends up working out. I really, really like this camo for the AE Phase 1. It looks absolutely epic. They got the little uh, engine in the back. This reminds me of that Chrysler um, jet engine car in real life, if any of you know what I'm talking about. Very, very cool vehicle. So, power to weight, you can see, is pretty good. I mean, we're already going upwards of 30 kilometers per hour. This tank is pretty mobile in that... Uh, in that regard, which is nice. Having a good power to weight makes even a slow vehicle feel a little bit more enjoyable, because obviously when you're climbing up a hill like this, you are uh, quite a bit faster, and that's what I really, really like about this vehicle. So we are slowly but surely making our way up this hill. Quite a bit faster than the rest of our heavies, though, at least. And we're obviously going to head right to the middle of the map. we got an AMX 1390 and a WZ-132A. Okay, there's a TL-7 and a lot of freaking heavies. Look at that line of heavies, bruh. Well, we got the TL-7 in the front, and... Hmm. Well, we're going to see if we can get some damage into the TL-7. I'm a little worried he might try and just YOLO us, but I guess... We are going to find out. We're going to drive up this ridge and uh, bonk. There you go. 403. TL7 misses the first shell on me. And uh, we're just going to chill here. And we reload again. Not able to hit him in the hatch there. But that's okay. And... Oh, what? 301, bro. 301. All right, game. Well, uh, we're getting shot in the side already. This is not looking to be an amazing team we've been given here. Uh, that's actually pretty bad. I'm gonna have to back up, and I don't want to be shot by this Conqueror, but I don't... Eh, actually, we might be able to get back before he has the shell on me. And there you go, we actually slam a shell into him for 400. Not only that, but our team absolutely bleeds him out, which is pretty dang nice, so... I guess not too bad after all. We got the Ag Tiger all the way in the back, and... Let it aim in. Unfortunate. That is a classic RNG moment. Alright, well... We're doing all right, at least, which is pretty good. Uh, we have that T-103 in the back, and we also have the E-50. There you go. 436 slap. We reload in five seconds, so we should be able to get at least one more shell out. And... There you go. Another nice shot into the enemy E-50. And is he gonna keep chilling, looking at us? I don't really know. We're just gonna aim it on his uh, frontal armor. There you go. Beautiful. Unfortunately, uh, our teammate isn't really doing anything to stop the enemy from uh, overpoking, is he? No, he is not. Well, we get a shell into the enemy BZ, and we back up. At least we bled him out a little bit, which is pretty good. We're at 2,400 damage at this point, which is pretty solid, and uh, yeah, we're, we're not doing too bad at all here. All right, let's see. We got the uh, Renegade in the open, sort of. Um, really? 
He just over pokes it. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna shoot him in the track wheel. Oh, and we just got about everybody and their mother shooting at us. Well, I can't really say I did a great poke there. I should have known that the BZ was just gonna push it, but I don't know. That w that was a bad play for me. I'll admit that. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and cross this if I can. I'm gonna get over here and uh, we're gonna see if I can kind of get hauled down against the BZ. And we'll see if I can get some damage out. Let's see. There's the BZ and bunk 430 damage shell into his hatch. At this point, the BZ's a one shot, which is obviously pretty good for us. And we're going to aim it on his vehicle one more time. And there you go. That's what I should have done originally. That's my fault. I uh, I just thought the AMX was going to help me a little bit more than he ended up doing, um, which is it's life. I mean, you can't always expect your teammates to help you. Um, we got the IS-2 off to the flank, and apart from that, I'm just going to wait right here. BZ-68 was last spotted there. We also got the Moots, who appears to have jumped off. There you go. We got an object. Ah! Oh, oh, wait. We hit him? What? How did we do sick? We had to have ammo racked him. I thought my shell missed. I guess it didn't. Okay, well, we know the Yag Tiger's still in the back there, which is something that I'm a little cautious about. There's the Yag Tiger. Let's aim it on his vehicle, and there you go. Also, a really, really juicer shot. So, yeah, I mean, this is a great tank. We're at 4,700 damage, and we've taken what was a pretty bad game, if you want my opinion, and actually elevated it, elevated it to be a uh, pretty solid one. It'd be great if this AMX would stop blocking me. I, I, it's almost like he's purposely blocking me, but uh, we still got the shell out. Oh! IS-32 missed me with his first shot. Pretty lucky. Alright, let's see if he, uh, if he proceeds to back up again. I'm going to stay side on so he kind of pokes me. I'm really hoping he does. Come on, do it. Do it. No. Oh, wait, we got the... I didn't even know the ELC was right there, bro. Oh, that's great. Well, we did over 5,000. And uh, I'm not going to lie. I played a little bit poor. My brain's racked. It's currently uh, 3.20 in the morning. I don't know if you can see that. But it's, it's 3 in the morning. But I figured I might as well record a video today because I didn't get one out yesterday. So... That is the AE Phase 1. It's got a great turret, a fantastic gun. I don't even think we loaded gold. I don't think we fired a single gold round that entire game. And it shows you just how effective this vehicle can be. We earned a decent amount of credits at 63,000. It's just a great tank in general. I personally think that the AE Phase 1 is quite an underrated uh, Battle Pass vehicle. Sure, it's one of the older ones, but that doesn't mean it's bad. And it's by far the most flexible out of the bunch if you're a newer player and you're just getting into the Battle Pass or you're someone who just wants to get experienced with quite a solid tank. This is definitely what I would recommend to go for. It looks cool, it's fun to mess around with, and that's all that really matters. The Sharfu Chair 4. This is another old Battle Pass vehicle, but I still think it is equally as deadly. Why is the Sharfu Chair so good? Well, first of all, it's basically a light tank with the capabilities of a medium. Does that ring a bell? Yes, the Boss Shot on Barask is like that as well. This is kind of like an upgraded Barask. It features four shells, which each deal 400 damage. So it takes 12 seconds due to the four second intra clip to deal 1600. That's pretty dangerous. Definitely something you're not going to want to mess with. It has ridiculously good pen, 330 mils. Again, it's basically got a medium gun on a light profile because the vehicle reaches a top speed of 60 and it has 48% concealment while sitting still, 40% while moving. I mean, that's crazy good camo values. This thing is fast. It's got camo. It's got an accurate gun. It's got pen. It's got it all. And because of that, it is really dangerous. Now, the thing about the Char is you need to have two loadouts for it. And that's why this can be a bit more costly of a vehicle. Lights and, you know, mediums of a light roll, like the Char, you have to run two loadouts. You have to have a damage loadout where you have accuracy, you know, something like vents, V-stabs, aiming device. But you also need a loadout where you are running spotting because it sometimes is huge. You know, if you get it on a map like Prof Prokhorovka, you can make the entire difference between winning and losing a game if you decide to run a spotting build on the Char. Even if you have a light, you don't know how long they're going to live. A lot of light players end up killing themselves within the first two minutes on Proc. So because of that, the Sharfu Chair is just a great vehicle in general to kind of have that pseudo build for. That's exactly what I've done. So we arrive on Lakeville. And this is a great example of a map where you do not need a spotting loadout. We are going to swap over to our damage loadout because I don't really see much opportunity here to, uh, you know, do really anything for spotting. I mean, yes, 
there are spots you can detect. You can go to the little corner there and spot people as they go across, and you can go to the path as well. But for the most part, I do not see much of a reason to run a spotting build in this map. Especially when we have two light tanks, one of which an ELC, and another the T92, which is a great spotting tank. What we're going to do, early game, is uh, we're going to head down the middle road here. There are a lot of mediums, there's an E50, Kampf Panzer 50 ton, standard B, a lot of dangerous tanks, which is something that we will have to keep in mind. I'm going to chill right here. I think this is a, uh, a decent spot for now. Alright, well, we'll see what happens, right? I do have to be very careful. There's the enemy ELC. All right, well, I'm just glad the ELC can't see me as of now. We got the TS-54. There you go. One shell into the TS. And uh, let's see. Is he going to keep going? He does. There you go. Another shell into the TS. And... Bonk. Okay, well, he's dead. We are spotted, though, which is not exactly what I love to see. However, we should be fine for the most part, just because of the fact that we're obviously... Uh, we obviously have this big old rock here. Let's aim it on that ELC. Ah... Well, the Shrek tries shooting at us. Not really sure what actually spotted me, but interesting. All right, well, we're going to obviously use our repair kit sooner than later. Oh, boy, our T-92 is getting bled quite a bit. There's something, um, I'm not sure where, but there's something on their team detecting, and that's obviously not good. I'm going to try and get out while I have the opportunity, though, uh, because I don't really see much of a point to hold that, and thankfully... We were smart enough to get out. Yeah, something spotting us. Uh, probably the boss... Nah, it's got to be the ELC, but I'm just surprised the ELC is seeing me from that distance because, as you could see, we were uh, we were pretty, pretty far back there. All right, well, we're going to head over towards town. Our team, I don't know what they're doing. They're taking a while, but I'm going to move in on town, and we'll see if I can get some shells out. Looks like the enemy team has moved up on the town, so maybe we can... Uh, we can push up, dig that ELC out, bruh. Really? I don't I don't know how I'm getting detected. It's gotta be that ELC. I mean, the little rat probably moved up because I cannot imagine that the boss Shation is spotting me from that distance. I just I don't know. Maybe I'm losing it. Maybe they have like a Shrek somewhere spotting me, but I, I just don't feel like an ELC should be able to see me from that distance. Um and I don't think it's the bat chats. I I don't know. I mean we still have pretty decent camo in a vehicle like this. Well, let's see what we can do. We got the uh, TS-54 in front. There you go. One shell into the TS. And uh, let's get a second shell into the TS-54. And a third shell. <laughs> he just let us nuke him. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Those players did not know what they were doing. And we were able to get two TS-54s cleared this game with 2200 damage dealt. You can see why this tank is so dangerous. I mean... That damage output is really, really nasty. Not something to be messed with. And sure, like, you gotta wait a while to get your shells back, but, I mean, <laughs> we brought a full health TS-54 down to zero, so. I think it was a Shrek spotting us, bro. That's so rat. I actually, it might have actually been a Char, you know, now that I think about it, but it would not surprise me if it was actually the Shrek that was uh, keeping us lit up here. All right, let's move up, and uh, let's aim it on the enemy Char. There you go. Easy shot. Unfortunately, our IS-3A does die, but, okay, I'm really hoping that we can somehow spot this Shrek. Oh, nope, never mind, we're getting spotted somehow. Again, <laughs> we are like the master of getting randomly spotted. Oh well, um, we can see the enemy Shrek over here. I'm just going to cross this. Probably, probably will be detected, but I guess we'll find out. I'm not too worried about it. I want to see if we can get maybe a shell or two into the 50 TP. And is he going to cross this? That's my question. It looks like he was. Yeah, there you go. One easy shell into the 50. And we're going to go for his track wheel. There you go. Another shell. And not able to get the last out. Might as well start reloading the clip. Artillery misses me, which is obviously pretty nice. Uh, the only problem right now is the only tank we have over here is the TS-54. That's it. So, I'm going to start backing out. I, uh, I know better than to hold that on my own. Of course, we're spotted again. Uh, I, I would expect that. It's one of these guys over there. I would love if our T-92 could... Um... Oh, actually, you know what? Eh, it looks like we should be good. Looks like our team is doing somewhat good work keeping those guys spotted over there. Nice! Okay, the Bat Chat's dead. That was obviously one of the main threats, so... With that bat chat gone, 
not nearly as worried. All right, let's uh, destroy this wall if we can. And then let's back up. There we go. We got the enemy 50 TP. Um, let's back up to the point where I don't know if the 50 TP will be able to spot us. There's one pen. Two pens. Oh, yeah. That's got to hurt you. And three pen. Well, not a pen, but we tracked him, which means we aim in one more. There you go. Well, we still uh, brought what was a full health player down to 74 health. I'm telling you, this thing is diabolical. Like, th this tank is truly diabolical, if you know what you're doing properly. That 50 TP can't even really counter me. Like, all I did was backed up. I thought he was going to spot me, to be honest, but I guess not. We were able to use bush mechanics properly, and it worked well. Well, we got uh, 10 seconds left on our reload. We only have a couple APCR left, but we've only been using APCR this game, so I can't really complain. All right, well, let's move up a bit, and we're going to cut low here. Oh, there's the enemy Borsig, okay. Um, let's move in, and let's see if we can get a shell into the Borsig, possibly. There you go, one shell, and... Not able to get... Eh, mm, yeah, I'm not going to waste that. I was going to say, that's that's kind of a waste of a shot. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to wait 37 seconds to reload my clip again. Alright, well, let's see, is that ELC over here? I bet you he is. That ELC's got to be sitting somewhere here. If he's not, he definitely left. There's the enemy Shrek. There's the artillery. And there's a Kampf Panzer. Okay, well, I'm going to get a nice snap into the Shrek. Wow, that was a really, really surprising shell. Alright, well, we got two shots left, so I might as well push the uh, KPZ and get one. That didn't damage him. Okay, game. And, uh, well, there's our second. I can't believe our shot didn't damage him. Like, I, what? Either way, 5,200 damage, 1,600 assisted. I mean, I don't I don't think I need to really say much more. I think the results speak for themselves. The Sharfu Chair and the AE Phase 1 are both absolutely amazing vehicles. And I would highly recommend to get both of them if you have the opportunity. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can get both of these tanks for the same price as a Cobra. And you're getting way more diversity. Don't get me wrong, the Cobra's fun, but it sucks credits like a drain. And it's just not a very good tank if you want to get consistent wins. Like, it's dangerous, don't get me wrong. But I think I could win a lot more in a Sharfu chair than I could in a Cobra. So we ended up dealing 5,200 damage. We earned 34,000 credits. Not that many, but you know what? We aced it, so I can't get all too mad. The Sharfu chair is just an amazing tank. I actually played one other game in it as well and did another uh, 3,000 damage, but the game is kind of mediocre and boring, so I didn't even bother showing it. Either way, the Char and the AE Phase 1 are my picks for the two best Battle Pass vehicles. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.